I'm here in Park Esler with Paddy Talley. As full time goes in the Monaghan Armagh semi final, in the Ulster semi final, Paddy, that was an extraordinary game. It was incredible. Incredible. Look at, this, at the, at the uh, scoreboard there, then you're thinking it's more like a hurling line scoreboard because there's, there's so many scores. But listen, what, what a game of football from the start. A, Really a game of two halves. You know, the first half was all Monaghan, the second half largely was all Armagh. The big thing was that Armagh probably just gave Monaghan too much of a lead and just couldn't bring it back. But um, really, the uh, strange thing was when Armagh pushed themselves right back into the game, got themselves back to a point ahead, and then they backed off and they stopped squeezing Monaghan and left Monaghan a few short kickouts. And Monaghan, being Monaghan, really, really experienced, worked the ball to Conor McManus, who won, who won two free kicks and, and uh, won the match essentially. Mm. Yeah, 417 to 221 was the final score line. I remember at halftime I turned to you and said this would be a high scoring match if that was the full time score. And the second half was just the exact same as the first half, except Armagh were the ones that were pushing on and, and trying to get the win. Let's start with the first half. Yeah. Armagh were incredibly open in mm -hmm. defence and the Monaghan full forward line absolutely tore them to shreds. Yeah, yeah, it's surprising actually how open Armagh were in the first half. Um, they really just tried to play it's a very open game of football. Armagh squeezed the Rory Biggins kickouts, but there was a bit, bit of a breeze, and Rory was able to clear out a lot of the Armagh players on his kickout, which found spaces in behind. But the most, the most surprising thing was about it that really there was left one on one at the back. And Jack McCarron got off to a flyer. He really had a big influence in the first half. He, he set up two goals. He scored a goal himself. Uh, he was able to hit the better of Aaron McKay. And really monitor all guns blazing at the start of the game. And got themselves into fantastic ways. I think I looked at my notes and after 15 minutes, there was a, I think there was, was a 2-6 or 2-7 that, uh, that monitor on the board. Now that's, that's a big start in any game. And... Uh, but it was surprising how, how open Armagh were. It's not just in like Armagh. I think they felt coming out here today, they must be able to take Monaghan toe to toe. And really, in the second half, when they went at it differently, they were, were better. But I have to say that the, the efficiency Monaghan had in the first half was fantastic. And Armagh did miss a few chances, but it sort of kept the game closer. And one of the narratives coming into this game was, you know, Armagh were missing Blaine Hughes and the goalkeeping situation, Rory Began. Shea McGill came into goals for Armagh in the first half and Monaghan really pushed hard up on his kickouts and got some good ball off it as well. Yeah, and, and I feel sorry for him. He was put into the Lions then on, on, the, on the day and one of the goals he, he made a, um, an error on a kickout and it caused a goal. But in saying that, after he'd recovered really well and his, his second half's kickouts were great. He picked out Ray O'Neill, he picked out Austin O'Neill, he picked out different players making runs in, in the space in the second half. So I think the young goalkeeper has a lot to be, you know, he proud of himself the way he recovered in the second half. Um, but th it is a factor. There's no doubt at the start it was shaky for Armagh. They weren't sure where to go in the kickout. They were going to go, like, go long, go short. And I think even they just decided from not to go short because it was too risky. And when they went long, they were very successful in the second half. But uh, it may have had a big factor in the game. You mentioned Rain O'Neill there. The second half, I mean, Rain O'Neill has to be one of the most talented footballers in the country and that second half there, he was man of the match, the official man of the match and he probably deserved it as well. He was key to Armagh bringing this game back. Yeah, when you're thinking of, of really good young players in Ireland the minute you're talking about David Clifford or you're talking about uh, Michael Langan, you're putting Rain O'Neill up along with the best of them. You know, he is a superb player, he's, he's an exceptional talent. Not just his, his, his skill and his ability on, on the ball and his, and his, his willingness to, to, take, to take responsibility, but his work rate. You know, Rain O'Neill was putting in hits in, in, inside his own 13 metre line there towards the end. I think it was Conor McManus went through and Rain O'Neill made the tackle on him to, to turn the ball over. He was exceptional today. I thought Rain O'Neill's, and it's, 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 to play so well and come out in the losing side by a point, I'm sure he'd be very disappointed tonight. But Rain O'Neill is a, he has been doing this for a while for Armagh and doing it consistently. And I think to be honest, it's one of the reasons Armagh have advanced really well on this last couple of years is Rain O'Neill, Conor Turbot. Uh, Oshin O'Neill and a few of these young players coming through and Ross McQuillan coming back from, from Australia and you know Armagh have a lot to be positive about here too. I do want to finish on Monaghan because I mean this was an extraordinary uh, performance for a team that had to go through what they went through over the last 24 hours but Armagh they haven't been to an Ulster final now in, since 2008. Yeah. Kieran McGuinney's had this team since 2015. This is his team. This yeah. is his squad. Do, I mean, do they just need that push to the Ulster final to get over the line to, to finally cement themselves or, or are they go, going to keep regressing and keep just coming at coming short every time if they don't get to that point? I, I think they're, I think Kieran's done a remarkable job. Like, you know, he's seven years into it and he has a team now that you say he's built himself, really. There's none of the old yard there, really. Very few players the old yard. This is a brand new team. I think these new young players that have come in have been a breath of fresh air. I also think that tactically they've evolved. I think that... 
the uh, they're much more direct now than would have been. They're much more. They'll take a risk. They'll have a go at it. They'll, they'll go long. But they have the players to do that with Andrew Mernon and Ryan O'Neill and Oshin and these lads. They can go long on, on, on balls inside. The flip side of that is they're probably not as good defensively as it would have been in the past. You know, if you back to their successful teams that were around the past when you had the like of the, you know, the fancy value and Andy McNulty and Justin McNulty, Aidan O'Rourke and Kieran McGinney himself, that that Lernerman team, they were solid, really tight mark in defence. Uh, I think they're a bit more up in the back. So I think that's the one we Armagh have to get to if they get the grips. Last year it happened against Donegal in the Championship too, where they conceded heavily and today they conceded heavily as well. So I think they can really be very positive by going forward and they're creating chances. But if they can get the defence organised, which they did better in the second half, I think they can be um, they can certainly be a force next year in Division One. Not yet an Ulster final it will be disappointing. Um, it was there if they had taken, but uh, I think in terms of progress, they're definitely heading in the right way. In terms of Monaghan, I mean, that 24 hours finding out, you know, the, the tr- tragic news of the minor captain passing away, and the mental grit to even just show up to this game first of all, but to come back and win this match, especially because of what happened last year against Cavan, even to come back, the mental restraint of this Monaghan side is really, really to be, you know, it's really to be envious of. Yeah, I, I did tip Monaghan before the game simply for that reason, that, that the Monaghan are, are incredibly resilient. They've, they've, they've been doing this for so long now. Those A lot of those players have been round the block. They, they know how to grind out results. And um, with all that done last night and the, the tragedy uh, and having to deal with that, it took an awful lot of resolve. Probably nothing we'll ever understand as outside looking in here, but that Monaghan change, I might say, have been a very emotive and a very emotional place probably today after the game. And I'm sure those guys are very tired after that today, not just the exertion of the pitch, but emotionally in every other way. And um, they, they showed fantastic heart. Like, you know, there was a stage in that second half and our man went back to win a point ahead. And you're thinking, right, they've done really, really well tonight, but this has gone beyond them. But no, they come back again, come back again, and, and they created a couple of chances to get, get the result. It's been it's been a, a nightmare for, for the people of Monaghan and especially for the Duffy family and everybody connected to it. And, and really to be eerie today, you know, at the start of the match, people coming in, but it's a very subdued atmosphere, people are coming along, but as the game warmed up, people got behind their team, and maybe this is an escape for that hour and a half, two hours, to get away from what's, what's going to happen the next couple of days, the grief and the outpouring of grief and, and the funeral and everything else will be, will be really, really tough. Um, but this is what the GA family is about. There's nothing as sure as the support that that family will get from the Monaghan Harps Club and the wider GA community in, in Monaghan and beyond will be will be nothing less than what we expect from the GA. So it, it hap- it's happened. These things have happened all over Ireland and, and all and lots of clubs. And you see the way people get in behind them. And if there's one thing today that that the team do, even that's is, is testament to the resilience of the people but also just give people a lift I think that'll be a good thing for the Monaghan people today and, and I'm in one way sort of delighted for Monaghan to get the results because I think even the next over the next week while it gives people something to look forward to when, when this week's over and things start settling down it'll be something for them to look forward to they have an under 21 or an under 20 final coming down the line and now they're going to have a senior final and that's, that's a fantastic thing for Monaghan but in the, it, football really peels into insignificance on a day like today And just to finish off then the other semi-final tomorrow night uh, Donegal against her own I mean, they're two powerhouses of Ulster. Donegal have been probably dominant, the dominant side in Ulster over the last couple of years. Who do you fancy in that? And do you think the winner is going to come from this match or do you think it's going to come from tomorrow? Yeah, this is the game I was more looking forward to this weekend. I thought Armagh Monaghan was a, was a real, real, really, really good game. I, just, and I sort of expected a battle. I didn't expect it to be as good as that, as it's done. But um, tomorrow's game could be different. You know, Tyrone Donegal games over this last... 10 years have been touchy affairs really they haven't really opened up to being big big games now maybe tomorrow could be different now no, there's a there is a, a probably Donegal have a fair advantage going into the game I think tomorrow they're very settled they have the same more or less same players same management team for a number of years they know the system really well they know their roles within the team really well and they have a lot of really good footballers they're very talented their own new management team in this year and Brian and Fergal have so little time to work with this team they really have only had what 12 weeks from the start to now, and now they're hitting Donegal, who have been, who are really on a, on a, her way ahead of Throne in terms of development. But the one thing Throne can always have is that, that that they always have the quality, a lot of quality players. And there's, I, I just noticed in the last game in Cavan, there's great bait in Throne. There's the making them in the quality of football all the time wasn't great, but there's certainly a hunger and, and an energy in around the middle. That was that was haven't seen for a while. Um, so. 
to call the game, I don't know. I really don't know. I think if Michael Murphy's fit and Michael Murphy's fit to play, and he, he's, he's going to be a big factor in the game because I think he, he makes things happen for, for Donegal. He, he, even last week when the game, I think they were maybe down by a couple of scores to come onto the field against Derry, and all of a sudden the game turned. So he is a massive factor to the match, but it's really a, it's anybody's calling who could win it tomorrow. Um, if I put my neck on the line now, I would say maybe Tyrone by a point or two. All right, Paddy, cheers to that. Cheers. All right, thanks very much. All the best.